Today, I would like to talk a little further about uh, the Dhammapada verse number 118. And I'd like to share with you something, of course, that uh, happened recently. And it reminds me of an uh, old, old story that I have. Maybe one that I haven't told in a while. Maybe I'm telling too many stories. I don't know. But uh, something that happened to me yesterday, and I will talk about something that happened to me in 2007 when I was in Myanmar going for alms. Both of these are alms stories, going pindabata stories. So we'll start. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase. So I've said this verse before, I'm going to say it again. It's a verse number 118. It's from the Dhammapada. And it's a, a very wonderful book. If you haven't picked it up, uh, if you haven't heard of this, uh, you can find this book uh, online for free. Many, many different translations. Um, you, can, you can order free copies somewhere. You can look for it. Uh, the Taiwan organization uh, has this, the Buddha EDU. Uh, they have it as well. It's a very wonderful book of uh, Buddhist poetry. A lot of the quotes that you see online, if they're real, <laughs> uh, they come from the translations uh, from the Dhammapada. So here's the verse. I'll say in the Pali and I'll give a translation. Punyanche purisa karira, karira nam punam punam, tammi chandam karira te, sukho punyase ucheo. Should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there, for being blissful is the accumulation of doing good. So, just as uh, I've repeated myself, I've said this verse before. Why? <laughs> well, it's good. <laughs> it's a... It's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to remind. And we can do that again and again as well. And a lot of my life, a lot of my life as a monk, like I said, I'm a prop for people to do good. And so I have so many stories of generosity, so many jo uh, stories of people doing good things, being generous, being helpful, and helping the monk. And I put myself in this position. For 23 years, now it's, a, I guess, 23 years, since a 2001, February 7, 2001, I haven't touched money, haven't handled money. I think one time someone left a wallet uh, somewhere and I picked it up for that person. But you know what I mean. And so when we don't have money, we are left at the, at the mercy of the donors. And being a monk, it, it helps. You know, if you're dressed in late clothes and you don't have money, it, it might be a different world. But it's very wonderful because we see a world of human kindness, especially when we live in countries where they recognize the monk and they know what the monk should be doing. And so, like I said before, I've been going for alms with my bowl. I brought my bowl. This is my bowl. This is my bowl that I use. And my brother gave me this bowl. And I think he, uh, he got this uh, bowl cover, or another donor got it, or they both organized it together. And so I've been going alms, as I've been saying, on the weekends. And as I said before, normally I make a determination, with the exception of a small snack, not to eat what is not given to me directly. 
and I go for alms, and recently I've been, I had another person with me, because the, um, my bowl is getting full. This is a, a large bowl. It's, a, it's an eight-inch bowl. It's, it's about average size, especially in Myanmar, if they have a Thai bowl. You can see how large it is, and this bowl, especially since we started using these um, banana leaf uh, packets, they make like a little container out of banana leaves, and they uh, put it in, it keeps the curry separate. So it uh, takes up a lot more space, and so I started having problems. I started having problems with um, carrying everything back because it was overflowing my bowl. And one of the ladies said to me, actually the last lady, at the end of the road, there, there was one lady there at the end of the road, and she asked me, she says, please, you know, you come to this other house. You go to the left, you go to the end of the road, you go to the left. And I said, no, 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 I cannot go to, the, to an, another house. Already I have too much food. I come here because I've been coming here before. If they want to come, they have to, they have to come to your house. And if they're there, I will accept. But the problem is, if I go to one house, and the next house says, please, you come to this house. And then the other house says, please, you come to this house. So I, I picked like a stopping point. But I told them, I said, you know, if, you, if, you want to, if they want to come, they can come. So now there's like two ladies at this uh, right before the last house, and there's three, sometimes four ladies, four families, donating, donating at the last house. And at this very last house, <laughs> I'm running out of room. But they, you know, they play this like little Tetris game. They, they rearrange the packages and this and that, and they think, okay, well, this is dry, so we can give you a small plastic bag. And I started to feel this, and I said, you know, I, I had a plastic bag ready, but I forgot it. I'm, I'm speaking a little bit of Sinhala. I don't speak very well. And the lady says, I will bring you a bag. I will bring you a proper bag. So I think one week, two weeks, maybe on the third week, I'm getting my food, the third weekend. And yesterday would be that, second or third week, or I can't remember. And she puts this on my bowl. She puts this on my bowl. And, you know, it just looks like a, like a cloth, you know, like a, like a lap cloth. And I opened it up, and I could see that it was indeed a bag. This is the shoulder strap, and then I can put, uh, you know, some extra dry curries in there, and I can... I can put it over my shoulder if I want like this. <laughs> but I was looking at the bag. I was looking at the bag. Now this is a normal bag. Here, this is a normal monk bag. We have like a, um, you know, normally they're like this shape. It's, it's, it's close. But you can tell, like this is a manufactured bag. It has scissors and, I'm sorry, scissors, zippers. It has zippers and pockets and like this. But this bag, it doesn't have that. I'm not complaining. Actually, I'm, I'm uh, boasting in her behalf. Um, this is a handmade bag. So she got the cloth and she sewed it herself, which was very nice. And I asked her if she, if she made it, because after looking at it, I could see. And yeah, she did, she did indeed make it. And so I was very inspired by that. And why did she do that? She did that because should a person do good, let him do or let her do it again and again. Let her find pleasure there. For being blissful is the accumulation of doing good. She wanted to donate the food to me, but my bowl was full. My bowl was full, and she wanted to donate food because she is the last person. She wanted to make it easier for me to carry, bring back to the, uh, 
the, the donation hall. And then I could take my food and then I can offer to uh, those individuals who, who need it. Like I said before, um, there was a salmonera. He didn't have, and he came late or something. He had an empty bowl and I served him. And people take the food and then when lunch comes, uh, our food that we collect from the village is actually in front of all the other food. It's in front. I made, I made sure of it. It used to be at the end. But uh, I, I told them that it should be in, in the front. This was before I, I was going because I wanted to take that food first. That's why I arranged for it to be first. But the problem was it was at the end of the line and I was like, well, now I don't have room in my bowl. I, I've taken what I needed. So um, I, I believe it's the most valuable food and it should be uh, used up first, actually, before we use the monastery food. Not to say that the monastery food is not important. We have donors and they... They uh, come, they bring the food themselves, or they, they pay uh, the kitchen to cook it. So uh, this is also uh, very uh, well appreciated. But there's something about uh, the, the worth of the food that we collect from the village. It's very wonderful. And as I say, it's the most expensive food in merit. So... So she wanted to give, and she wanted to make sure that it was comfortable for me to carry back so that it could be carried back and so that she could put her food in the bowl. And that's it. <laughs> it that's, that's, that's all the story that inspired me for, for today. But it reminded me of another story that I have when I was in Myanmar. When I was in Myanmar, I was living in Pa'ak. I was living in the lower monastery because it was, uh, it was very far from the upper monastery to walk to Pa'ak village. And Pa'ak is a village. Pa'ak Sairoji is named after the village, not the other way around. Some people think, oh, he's just naming the monastery after himself. No, it's not like that. So I used to walk to Pa'ak village and in different villages, Yorgo village and Pa'ak village, in different, different villages. Each village is just a couple of streets. And so what I used to do, and this is how they did it, I, I felt like uh, I was causing a burden if I went too long to the same village. And so I would have one street, a couple streets here that I go and I make sort of a loop. And then I have another couple streets I go to and make another loop. And I would rotate about one, I think it was once a week. Once a week or once every two weeks. I think it was once a week. And so it was, a, it was this uh, cycle. It was a cycle where the first day I go to this new village, they don't know I'm coming. And so all they have is rice. And so that day, you know, I might get lucky and get a, uh, maybe a, a fried uh, s triangle samosa. We call it a samosa. It's a Myanmar style. And, uh, and maybe, maybe I might get a curry. Sometimes I would get like soup, these, uh, the instant noodle soup. Could maybe get that. Sometimes only rice, as I said before. Sometimes only rice and juggery or rice and sugar they give because they don't know I'm coming. So then they don't know if I'm going to come the next day, especially in the beginning. So I come down this road, and then they understand that I'm, I'm coming. And then slowly, slowly, we, we get these uh, small bags of curry. Plastic bag, they put the curry in the plastic bag. And uh, this is normally how they do it in Myanmar. They keep it separate. But not always. And so we get the... We get the... Um, We get the curries uh, this way, and slowly they, they start to um, accumulate. So first we get, uh, we get uh, one curry, and then later we'll get uh, two curries, and uh, later we get three curries, we get a bunch of cakes, and we get a lot of, uh, some, some biscuits. That's another thing we get if they, they don't know we're coming as well. Sometimes I break up the, the, the biscuits. These are, these are cookies, like sugar cookies. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, I'll pour hot water on it, and that's how I make my, 
I'm you. I said one time, actually, in my last talk. Actually, it happened many times, especially in the beginning of the week. And so the, the curries will start to, uh, uh, they'll start to accumulate. And then afterwards, you, you could sort of feel it. It starts to slack off a little bit. And then, and then uh, at, the very, uh, at the end of the week, then I would, I would stop and I'd start another, another road, another route, another couple of streets. And so I'd go through this whole uh, series where I would, um, I'd have like no food, only rice. It's not no food, it's, it's food, it worked. Lived off of it. And uh, I'd have... Uh, uh, mostly just rice in the beginning, and then I would have curries, well, slowly one, two, on the second or third day, then it, on the third day I'd have like just the right amount of food. And then it would start to accumulate a little bit more than I needed, and then uh, it would start to uh, slow down a little bit, and then, and then I would start another route, and it would go in this cycle of, of scarcity and abundance. And I would go to the kitchen when I, when I would go back home, to the monastery, I would stop at the kitchen in Paak, and I would take, I would take the, they would have a bowl waiting for me, and I would donate my extra food uh, before eating so that it doesn't get wasted. This is usable food, and the rice was separate. The Myanmar, Myanmar rice is, uh, is, is quite nice, it has a very good aroma, it's a, uh, they give a, a good, good rice, they say Myanmar is the the rice bowl to the world, they say, because they get so much rain there. And so I would do this for, for a while. I, actually, I would do this during dry season. You could, you could have dry season uh, for six months, like without any rain. And I would live in the lower monastery, away from the upper monastery, which is like a mile away. The, the monastery is quite big, Paak Monastery in Malamyang. And I would go on this cycle. And then I started to um, venture into a new, a new land. I wanted to explore. Sometimes he's like, okay, well, I'll see if I can find something in this village here. And I was cutting through um, uh, a, rubber, a rubber tree plantation to get to a village. And as I was cutting through, I would, I would go to the village. And then after a few days, um, this this one lady asked if she, she didn't ask, she just, she just came with rice. It's like, okay, I open up my bowl, she give the rice. And she's living in a, in a grass hut in the middle of the rubber tree forest. And then I would go to the village and I would collect my food and curries, my little bags of curries. And at that time I, I changed uh, to a, uh, what we call hinquet. Hinquet is a curry cup. So these like these little uh, silver cups, not silver, but metal, metallic cups. And uh, they're, they're just enough to hold um, uh, like a spoon or two spoons of, of some type of curry that goes with the rice and it keeps it separate. Then we don't have like all the plastic bags. And so I had, I don't know, maybe two or three of them. And so when people wanted to offer they would, they would, I would open up the cups and they would do it. And I would have my bowl cover. In, in Myanmar, we actually have like a rim on our, on our bowl cover because we, when we go for alms, we actually have our, our bowl cover, our top plate uh, like this, and it can hold the, the curry, curry cups, hinquet. And so I would do that, and, and slowly this lady from the rubber tree grass hut, she, she started to fill up my, my hinquets, my curry cups. First there was one cup, and she would give rice. And then I'd go to the village, finish my, my arms round, and the next day she had two curries. And then she said, please go to this, uh, this, this uh, little hut, over, this grass hut over the, by the, you know, 50 yards away. She points to it, and I go to it. And that house also gave me uh, curries. 
it was on the third or fourth day or something like that. I had three curries, I had, I had rice, I was on my way to the village, but there was no point in going to the village anymore. In fact, these two houses, they knew each other. I was getting a complete meal. I was getting an apple, I was getting a fruit, I was getting some type of protein, a curry and rice. And they even gave, I think, some coffee or tea mix as well. So I stopped going to the village, and this place was very quick. I could walk there, I think, within 10 minutes. It was on the way, it was in the forest. It was, it was, very, it was very nice. And so a week had passed, and I decided that I would continue to go there or I decided that if I would continue to go there, it would, be, it would be nice because I'm getting like a balanced meal. I was getting this scarcity and abundance, scarcity and abundance, and here I was getting just like the perfect amount of food. It was easy to do, it made me feel good, it made them feel good. And I asked this monk, I asked this monk, I remember he was in the computer room in Fa'ak, And somehow I felt a little bit shameful, and I said, I told him the whole story, scarcity, abundance, scarcity, abundance, taking the shortcut. And I had these, um, these uh, ladies who were giving to me, just two houses, two little huts. And I said, you know, normally I'm just like, I'm starving, I have too much, I'm starving, I have too much. But here I have the great, uh, perfect amount, everyone's happy. I was wondering, if I go continue to go there, maybe for a month or whatever. Is that okay? I'm asking them, I don't know. I don't know what's okay. They're very poor, or they appeared to be very poor. Living in a grass hut in the middle of a rubber tree plantation. And he smiles at me because he, he could see like, you know, I, I worried about that. And he smiles at me, and he says to me, he says, you know, <laughs> he says, you could go one year or two years, it doesn't matter. Keep going. He said, you can keep going. It's a no problem at all. I was just learning about this. I was new to the, to the monk life. Maybe I was a, maybe five, five wasa, six wasa, five years, six years as a monk. And I was new to this. I was new to going for alms, not just getting the monastery food, but going for alms. And he says, you can, you can go again. You go one year, two years, it doesn't matter. And he's smiling. He's sick because he, you know, it, it's... it's uh, It was a silly question to ask, almost. And that's why he's smiling, and it's very beautiful on, on both, both parties' minds. My mind being uh, worried to, to do this, and the donor's mind about how beautiful it was for them to give again and again. Just like the Pali. Punyanche puriso karira, karira nam punam punam. Dhammi chandam kirate sukho punyase uchayo. Should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there, for being blissful is the accumulation of doing good, doing good deeds. So I started to go to this. Uh, Shortcut through the, root, through the woods, through the rubber tree forest. And I go to the first house. She would give me the curries. I go to the second house. I would get the curries and rice. Rice, of course, and apple. And get the apple and get the uh, maybe some coffee mix as well. Complete meal. Even fruit. Fruit is very expensive in Myanmar. There was a time, actually, in, 
in, in Pa'ak, we couldn't get any fruit. Like, they didn't serve fruit. They stopped serving fruit. It was too expensive. The price just kept going up and up and up, and so uh, we didn't get any fruit. Now we get fruit. But there was a time when we didn't. But even then, they, even then they, would, they would give the fruit, give a nice apple. I remember the apple. Whatever they give, they gave. And I remember about, the, about this bag. About this bag. This lady gave me the bag because I didn't have enough room. And in the same way, in Myanmar, in that rubber tree forest, I had three cups. And I ran out of room because they wanted to donate more. I think I ended up with like five different cups. But where did I get the cups? Where did I get the containers? They gave me the containers. And when I, I would take the containers, I'd, I'd uh, come back and they, we would exchange the containers back and forth like that. And I think I had like five, sometimes maybe, I don't know, six, I can't remember. Definitely five, definitely five. And I remember they, they, I told them I don't have enough room to, to carry, I don't have the containers to carry this. And they, they, they found the containers to, to give me. And it was very nice, but this is not where the story ends actually. So in 2007, this was in 2007, this is when I left Myanmar. So when I first came to Myanmar, I came in on a tourist visa. I came in on a tourist visa because in order to stay long term at, in Myanmar, you had to get a meditation visa and you needed that sponsorship letter. And the, and the mail system was not reliable. It was known for not being reliable. A lot of the letters don't make it. Don't make it in, don't make it out. Usually they don't make it in. They think that people are sending money or that's what the rumor is. They open up the letter, no money, but they, now they have an open letter, they throw it away or something. That, that's what, that was what the word was, what people, the rumors. But somehow it gets lost. And in order to get something to get sent, you have to send registered mail. From America, at that time it cost like eight, eight dollars, maybe it cost ten dollars now, I don't know. At that time it was eight dollars, I think. The poor man's way was to send air letters or to, to, to send the letter twice, to print it out on a computer and send it twice. <laughs> Just carbon copy one for whoever wants to keep and read, or maybe it's surveillance or something like that. But somehow they don't, they don't make it. And so I was, on the, I was in uh, Thailand, and so it, it would be very difficult for me to get this sponsorship letter. So I just think, okay, I'll just go to, I'll just go to, uh, to Pa'ak. They didn't have internet then. They didn't have internet then. And so I just, I just decided to go to Pa'ak. I was on Agarika, and I think, okay, I'll get the letter, and if I really need to, I'll, I'll go to Thailand and come back. Because you have to, you have to come in on a, on a, on a residential or a, a, religious, a religious visa. You have to come in on that religious visa. They call them meditation visas, actually. And so I collected, uh, I collected uh, the letter, or was in the process of trying to ordain and deciding whether I had to go to Thailand or, or not. And somehow they did something special for me so that I didn't have to leave the country. It's a Buddhist country. A Westerner came. He wanted to ordain. At that time, there were not many Westerners who, who were ordaining in Myanmar. You know, this was, it was on the embargo list at that time. In 2001, Myanmar was was part of the six countries that were on the list of strict embargoes, you know, up there with Iran and maybe North Korea, you know, maybe third on the list was, was Myanmar. So they, they, didn't have, they didn't have email then, and, and uh, it was a Buddhist country, and 
is very easy for them to arrange. I don't know how easy, but they arranged it so that I didn't have to, to go out of the country and come back. And they just sort of let me stay and gave me their proper visa and stamped my passport. And after that, everyone at Pa'ak and maybe other meditation centers, they started coming in on a tourist visa and, and then getting the letter and then reapplying and, and changing the visa type. Fast forward to 2007, there was a new minister. They're trying to, um, we could say, maybe do things more by the book. And there was a new immigration minister, and he was looking at the history, and, and people were getting a new class of visa without leaving the country and coming back. You can't do this in any other country. And when it came time to renew people's visa, one by one, everyone was getting refused. Matter of fact, they had a form letter. They had a form letter, your visa has been refused. There are 300 and, I think it was like 320 something, whatever. 300 and something other people, they, to make you feel better, that, who were also refused as well. And so slowly, by, one by one, people started not getting their uh, visa signed. It wasn't rejected, but it wasn't getting renewed. The renewal. So we used to stay there for a year and renew. And, stay another year and renew. It used to cost money, it used to cost like $100. So eventually I decided to leave, and that's how I came to Sri Lanka. 2007, I think it was maybe March or so. So people were accumulating fines. They had a fine per day if you overstayed your visa. It's an overstay fine. So eventually I arranged for me, myself to get a one-way ticket to Sri Lanka. And it was time for me to leave. All this was going on. And in the meantime, I was going to this rubber tree forest plantation, and I was getting my alms. At that time, we had an email. I arranged it by email. I was getting my alms, and I told the, the lady that, who was serving me, I don't know, for a few months, maybe three months or so, two months, three months, I forget how long, actually, I should know, but I forget, it's so long ago. I told her uh, my, my broken Myanmar language that I won't be coming tomorrow, I won't be coming the next day. And she asked me where I'm going, and I said, I'm going to Sri Lanka. And I told her, like, Visa Magabu, something like that. It means a visa, no good. And she's, oh, okay. So then after she gave me her food, then I went to the, the, next, the next house that would also feed me. I went there, I also told them the same thing. And then I'm coming back. And normally when I come back, you know, it's, it's finished with the first house, but I, I have to go back, backtrack and go past that first house. And that lady is waiting for me again. And she's holding something in her hand. She's holding something in her hand. And it's a bag. It looked like a, a bag of, of tea mix. One tea or something like that. This green packets. It looked like a bag of tea mix from far away. But as I got closer, I could see it was money. And I don't know how much it was. But it But it was probably all they had. And I told her I don't touch the money. And she says, no, but Bhante, you need, you need the air ticket. <laughs> I don't know how much it was. Probably not enough for for an air ticket, but it might have been all that they had. And then she says, she says, <laughs> she says, one day I will go with you, I need to cook for you. <laughs> I still remember, <laughs> yeah. 
And I told her I had the ticket already. And so she wanted to come with me so that she could cook for me. Very kind, very kind of people. Myanmar is very special people, actually. Sometimes the less they have, the, the more they have to give. So yeah, I wanted to, to share that with you because it reminded me, this bag here, reminded me of this uh, rubber tree plantation lady. I tried to find that place when I came back in 2012. I think it was 2012, I had to go for alms in that village. I went back to Myanmar in 2012. I wanted to come to the retreat for Pien Uluwin. I needed a cool place. I was having problems with all the heat in Sri Lanka, especially that year. And I came to Paak Malamyan with Paak Saidoji. He had this whole uh, entourage or this whole uh, parade of cars. He's getting more and more famous in 2012. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to go, and you can't say no. Uh, so I went, uh, I, I landed in Yangon, went to, stayed in Tamlin, the, the, the Paak branch in, in Yangon. And so I went, uh, he asked me if I wanted to go to Malamyan, and so I, I don't say no, and I just went. And oh, it was such a long trip, because on the way he was stopping at all his new monasteries and looking at them. It's such a long trip. And they had the new bridge too, I think it's called the Modama Bridge. It's a short trip now, but uh, it still took uh, a long time. And I went, I went, to, I went to for alms in that village, but now it's totally changed. I think there's like a military hospital there or something. It's different now. I couldn't find the, the grass huts anymore. I think there was one house and and they gave me something, but I think it was a different house. It's 2012, so it was five years later, five or six years later. But when someone does kind things like that, it touches you, and you remember it for a long time, 2007. Now it's 2024, and I'm telling the story like I'm reliving it. Again, let's talk about this Dhammapada. Punyanche puriso krira, krira nam punam punam, tammi chandam kirate suko punya sucheo. Should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there, for being blissful is the accumulation of doing good of good. So, like I said, when I feel inspired, when something new happens, I get the bag, it reminds me of the hinquets, the curry cups, and of course, all the human kindness that I've experienced. And I wanted to share that with you because it inspired me and I thought I would in share that inspiration with you. So I hope that you, you can do good again and again and find the joy in doing that. And don't let anyone stop you from doing that. Let them do it again and again so that you can accumulate your merit and enjoy that bliss. And so I hope that you can do that good, enjoy that bliss, and use that uh, um, that good karma combined with the faith and morality to develop this samadhi, meditation concentration, and to use that samadhi for panya, insight, insight meditation, vipassana, so that you can reach nibbana safely and quickly. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.